Okay, so this part is about the uh, Empress Law. So this look a little bit complicated, but uh, this is a uh, very, very useful. Uh, so actually this, yeah, so this notation is quite similar, but this is not, uh, this is quite different from, from the one in the Gauss Law, although, although this circle have a similar meaning, similar meaning which means the close. But here we integrate, uh, we do the integration for a closed loop, for a closed loop, and we call it a line integral. I'm not sure whether you have learned it in uh, mathematical class. Uh, probably not, <laughs> probably not. You may learn it later, I, I, uh, according to, to, to last year. But actually, uh, we try to do this uh, operation. So we have a B view which may be non-uniform in the space, and then we choose a loop called the Amprian loop, or actually is actually a closed loop. So we do uh, B dot DS for every part on this loop. And then we add all of them together, and that's what the line integral do. For some of the case, we you can you can uh, you can do hand calculation, but actually, if it's not uniform, you may uh, run a program in the or a program in uh, MATLAB or, or whatever language, and you can calculate uh, the line integral using some numerical method. So actually, this is nothing but the B dot ds and then you add all of them together and as, as the summation uh, goes to infinity so it's nothing but a integral and for this case we call it a line integral because because uh, for a single variable integration for a single variable integration like this you learn in uh, calculus class it is nothing but all oh, fx is like this, and then we calculate uh, the area under this curve and uh, between the x-axis. So it's still like you integrate over x-axis because here we have dx. So you 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 calculate like that. You have fx, which is this one this one and then you multiply the width here and then you add all of them together you add all of them together so this case is uh, easier than that one because that one we need to do the inner product we need to do the inner product and follow a arbitrary uh, loop but usually it will be uh, something like a uh, straight line or or a circle which makes uh, it possible to use hand calculation to, to do the integration. So the left side is like that, it's like that. And for the right side, it is uh, mu zero, I enclose. Mu zero is a constant and I enclose is, is the current enclosed by this loop, enclosed by this loop. So you can recall what what we have done for the Gauss law. For the Gauss law, suppose uh, we have we have some charges and then we have a Gaussian surface. So this is the Gaussian surface. And maybe there are some charge outside. We will consider it is uh, something like this. E dot D A equals Q in close. So we have an integration and E0, F0, that's, that's one, mu0 at the right side, mu0 at the right side. But in the previous, uh, previous hour, we talk about constant ident. This is a K for the electrostatic. And now we have like that. So epsilon 0 and mu0, they should be uh, somehow, this is at the bottom, this is 
is at the top. So this one at the left side, that one on the right side. Somehow like that. And then we consider the charge enclosed, enclosed by the ground surface, enclosed by the ground surface. And suppose it is a 3D because it is a surface, uh, surface integral. That one is a line integral. This is just a loop. But this one is, should be a surface, should be a surface, enclosed or dissolved. So for two enclosed, we can only consider this one and this one for this case. We don't consider these two outside. And for that one, we only consider I1 and I2. We only consider I1 and I2 are the enclosed current. Are the enclosed current. I3 is not. I3 is not. So we need to consider the current. We'll assume I2 uh, are in, in finite long wire and then and then we use the right hand rule to, to design the the sign for the current. So here for this case the current is somehow counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So you use the right hand rule. So this sign is positive. So I1 is positive, I2 is negative. Then we will not consider I3 because I3 is not enclosed by this ampere loop. Okay. So which means that the, for the left hand side, for the left hand side we have this line integral and mu zero is a constant. We we need to consider what is the I enclosed. For this case, it is nothing but I1 minus I2. I1 minus I2. And that's it. I1 minus I2. Any questions? This is very important. Okay, no questions. Move on. So uh so for the Empress law. So we have the expression like this, expression like this, uh, magnetic field of a long wire with current. Uh, yeah. So actually, it can derive, suppose we have a wire, wire with a, uh, yeah, the wire with a radius, capital, uh, Yeah, this is quite strict. Uh, it should be capital R here. This one, the radius of this wire should be capital R. So this, this one should be small r. This one should be small r. So suppose you consider the the B view at these points, and R is the distance from the center of the wire to this to this ampere loop is small r. So you use the you use the uh, ampere's law. So for the left hand side, b is b is a constant because the distance from the whole loop to the center will be the same. So for the left side, it is nothing but two pi r times b. Because B is a constant, so you can factor out B, and B is always perpendicular to DS, uh, or uh, no, B always have the same direction as DS, theta equals zero. So B dot DS is nothing but B DS, B times DS, and B is a constant, so we can factor it out. So we have, so it will be equal to uh, B, ds. So integration of ds is nothing but the, the length of the circle, which is 2 pi r. So for the right side, mu 0 i, mu 0 i. So equals mu 0 i, mu 0 i. So we can see that 
B is mu zero i over two pi r, which is what we have derived. Uh, here, here, but at this point we consider the the y is very thin. Here we consider here we consider the wire has a has a thickness has a thickness so it has a radius of uh, capital r but now we consider we, we can also consider the the b field inside the wire inside the wire and we can actually derive it using the ampere's law So um, I enclose would be uh, over pi r square equals to i pi r square, which means that the total area of this of this uh, cross section is pi capital r square. So it has the total current i. And the I enclose and the I enclose for the inside part of the mm, Maybe I write on the right board. So now for this, for this wire, we draw it like this. So this is this is R. This is R. And this is the current. And then suppose we have an ampere loop inside inside the wire. This is the ampere loop. And this is small r, small r. So for the total wire, we have the current of i, and then the area is pi r squared. And suppose the current are uniform distributed across this cross-section. So for, for this ampere loop, we consider the I enclosed is the current enclosed by this loop, and the area of this part is nothing but pi r squared. So we should have, this is the current density. This is the current density. And this is the current density inside, they should be the same if we assume the current density is uniform. So these two are the same. So we have this expression. And in this case, uh, I enclose, I enclose will be uh, small r square over capital R square times i. And we use the Ampere's law for the left hand side, it is nothing but 2 pi r b equals r square over capital R square times i. So for the inside parts, we have b equals 2 pi, 2 pi r square r and r can be cancelled, so we have mu zero i r. So inside the straight wire, we have capital R square at the denominator and small r at the denominator. Rather than this one, rather than this one, we have two pi r. Uh, two pi small r at the denominator. Any questions? So we have a sample problem. So the cross section of the long conducting cylinder with uh, inner radius A and outer radius B. The cylinder carries a current out of the page and the magnitude of the current density across the cross section given by J, uh, which is proportional to the square of the radius with a c equals 3.3 times uh, 10 to 6 
ampere per meter to the fourth power. What is the magnetic field at the at a point that is three centimeter from the central axis of the cylinder? Cylinder, which means that we need to calculate the magnetic field for r equals to three. So now we know the current density, but now the current uh, the wire is not is not solid. It's not. It's hollow. It's hollow. Concinde. Concinde. So. So we need to calculate the I in close. I in close. Uh, which is J dot D A. J dot D A. Uh, J is actually has the same direction as the A vector. So J dot D A is nothing but J times D A. And. Uh, So it will be nothing but uh, from A to R, from A to R, C R square, uh, R D R, and then D theta from zero to two pi, because D A D A you know that D A is nothing but R D R D theta. And then R is from uh, A. A is the inner radius. A is the inner radius to R. So this path is the one enclosed by the ampere loop, but not the outer one. So you don't integrate from small a to b. You only integrate from small a to small r. And then suppose the ambient loop is uh, clockwise, so which is into the page, into the page, but now the current is out of the page, so we have a negative side here. We have a negative side here because, yeah, so we use the right hand rule, right hand rule. If it's clockwise, so into the page is the positive direction positive direction and the current is going out of the page so we have a negative sign here so it will be nothing but uh, minus c integrate from a to r and then we have r cube dr and then this one is nothing but 2 pi 2 pi so it is minus 2 pi c minus 2 pi c and then times 1 fourth r to the fourth power minus a to the fourth power so we use the uh, ampere's law b dot ds equals mu zero i mu zero i so that it will be 2 pi r because it is a circle times b equals uh, in close so mu zero times this stuff this stuff and then we can substitute the number uh, yeah we can yeah, we can actually write it out. So B is nothing but minus mu zero Z over four. Four R, R to the fourth power minus A to the fourth power. Because as you, uh, as you move, this part, move this part here and then you divide both sides by two pi R. And then 2 pi and 2 pi can be cancelled. So for the right side, we only have 4 out 
under mu zero z times this stuff. And then we can substitute the numbers. 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, and then times c is uh, 3 times 10 to the 6, 3 times 10 to the 6 over 4, how is 3 centimeter, 3 centimeter, 0 0.03. And then 0 0.03 to the fourth power minus a is two centimeter. A is two centimeter. 0 0.02 to the fourth power. So finally, the b should be minus 20 mu tesla. And then we'll know that. And then we'll know that uh, as the Ampere's loop is uh, clockwise. And then we calculate a negative negative value as the answer, which means that the the B is counterclockwise. B is counterclockwise. Okay. So actually at the very beginning you can you can define the Ampere loop to be counterclockwise then you get a positive answer. So it will agree with it. It will agree with it. Because if you have a, a counterclockwise ampere loop and then you get a positive answer, which means that the B field also is also counterclockwise. And if you just assume our uh, ampere loop is clockwise and then you get a negative answer, then you should know that the B is counterclockwise. So here we talk about the solenoid. Solenoid so, so we need to consider the magnetic field of a solenoid. Solenoid's magnetic field is the vector sum, vector sum of the field produced by the individual turns winding that make up the solenoid. For points very close to a turn, the wire behaves magnetically almost like a long straight wire. And the line of B that there are almost concentric circle. So you can consider in for electric uh, electric field, we have the capacitor. We have the capacitor. So for electric field, we have the capacitor. So we have a parallel plate. So this one is positive charge, this one is negative charge. So there will be a E field in between, uniform E field in between. And for the outside, there will be some fringe effect range effect. So this one is the magnetic case of the of the capacitor, which is actually an inductor. So that one is a is an is an L. Suppose you learn it in uh, second analysis. So that one should be a inductor and uh, it tells you that inside this loop Suppose uh, uh, there are many, many windings. So suppose the current is going, going like that, like that. And this is inside. So it will be. So if you looking from this point of view, then it will be clockwise for every loop, for every loop. So it tells you that inside this uh, solenoid, the B field will look uh, quite uniform in between. Quite uniform in between. And the point inside and the reasonably far away from the wire 
E is approximately parallel to the cent central. So it tells you that uh, all of them should point to this direction, which is parallel to the central of this uh, solenoid axis. So actually, you can also determine it by right hand rule, right hand rule, because uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. For this one, this is somehow uh, cross, uh, counter clockwise. So you use the right hand rule, follow the follow the current direction, and then the form will point to the direction uh, of the magnetic field. So it is into the page. This is out of the page. So the the current is somehow like this, going like this, and then you use a right hand rule, right hand rule, and then this side is the direction of the field view. Any questions? So in the last page, we know the direction of the B field, and now we know want to know the magnitude of the B field, and we can make use of the Ampere's law. Make use of the Ampere's law. So let us apply the Ampere's law to the ideal solenoid, and then we try to cut it out in a cross section. So. So we have a solar like this, and then we try to cut it in this direction, so that we can only see. We can only see uh, there are some current going out of the page, and then going into the page for every for every winding. Okay. So we define so we define an ampere loop like this, which is a rectangle which is a rectangle from A to B to C to D and go back to A. So it is a closed loop, which is also known as the Ampere's loop. So using a rectangle Ampere's loop, A, B, C, D, A. So we can actually calculate the line integral, which is the left-hand side of the Ampere's law, and then we can separate this integral into four parts. So the first part is from A to B, and then from B to C, from C to D, and then from D to A, from D to A. So we know that B, C, C, D, D, A are all zero, are all zero, because uh, for B, C, for B, C, we already assume that the B should point to the right side, should point to the right side. Uh, according to the argument in the previous page, we know that the B field point to the right side, point to the right side. And from B to C, from B to C, DS point to the upper direction, which means that the B field is perpendicular to DS, which means that B dot DS should be zero for BC and same as DA, DA. Uh, because uh, DS and yeah, DS and B are perpendicular to each other, and out of and out of this solenoid, we assume the B field is very small. It's very small. We consider out of this loop, the B field is very small. So we consider the B field for the path CD is also zero. So we will assume this term to be zero. The reason for this term to be zero and these two terms to be zero are different. These two terms are similar, we have a similar reason to be zero, and this one is another reason. We assume the B field outside the soul not to be zero, so this term to be zero. So the only remaining term is this one, is this one. And we also assume the B field is uniform inside this solenoid. So uh, B dot DS integration is nothing but B times the length, B times the length of this 
path from A to B, and it is H. So this line integral is nothing but B times H, B times H. So for the left hand side of the ambient law, which is nothing but B times H, and for the right side, everyone, everyone is I. Everyone is I. Uh, and then we also assume that N is the number of turns per unit length. Per unit length. So which means that for this ambient law, the left hand side is B times H. And the right side is mu zero I encloses I times the total number, the total number here, the total number of current here, which may be capital N. And we divide H on both sides, H on both sides. So B is mu zero I capital N over H. So small n here means the number of turns per unit length. The number of turns per unit length, not the number of turns itself. This is uh, normalized by the by this length. So this is this is the small n. So you need to be careful. So this one tells you that if you want to have a larger B view inside here. You either increase the current, you either increase the current or e or increase the number of turns per unit length. So the next case is a toroid. Toroid. Toroid is somehow like you have a sauroid and then you you uh, connect the head to tail and then you make it a so it's somehow like if you see it on the broad top it, it will be somehow like uh somehow like this somehow like this so you connect you connect a solenoid from from this point to that point so you bend it and then you connect them here so it Somehow like a toroid. So that has uh, been curved until its two two ends meet, forming a sort of hollow bra bra bracelet. This is a cone-shaped So from the symmetric, you can see that the line of B form concentric circle. So you can see the green line. The green line is the uh, magnetic field line, magnetic field line, and they form concentric circle. Suppose this one is also circle, and uh, and now we define the ambient loop to be the yellow one. To be the yellow one. To be the yellow one, uh, the not yellow, orange one, the orange one. So for the right side, we have mu zero i enclosed. I is the current of the toroid, and n is the number of turn, total number of turn, total number of turn. So it is different from this the previous case. Small n is the number of turn per unit length. Here, capital N is the total number of current. Because if you assume um, current loop, the ambient loop here, and then this is all, all out of the page, uh, out of the page. So you can consider this is the positive direction, positive direction. Uh, maybe not. No, no, should be 
So all going into the page, all of it are cross. This one are dot. The inside loop is cross, which means into the page. So uh, you use the right hand rule. So this one should be the positive direction. So the B view should be clockwise. B view should be clockwise. So for the right hand side, it is mu zero i times capital N. And for the left side, similarly, it is uh, 2 pi r b. And finally, we divide both sides by 2 pi r, so that the b field inside the toroid is nothing but mu zero i capital N over 2 pi r. So in contrast to the situation for a sonar, B is not constant over the cross-section of the toroid. Which means that if it is closer to the center, the magnetic field will be, will be larger. But for, for the sonar, we will consider, suppose it is sufficiently close, close to the central axis, then we assume the B view are uniform, are uniform. Although here there will be some strange uh, B view. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, so we have a sample problem. So a solenoid has, a big, has length capital L, capital L, uh, the inner, inner diameter, D, it carries a current, I, it consists of a uh, five close pack layer, each with uh, eight, 850 turns, a long length L, what is B at the center? So here we only talk about a solenoid, so we simply simply use B equals mu zero I N. Mu zero I N. Mu zero is nothing but four pi times ten to minus seven. And then the current is uh, five point five seven. And then uh, And then I is, we have five pack, and then each pack with 850 turn, and then the total length is 3.55 centimeter. The, let me, oh, the length is 1.23 meter. 1.23 meter. 1.23 meter. So we divide by 1.23. So diameter is irrelevant to, to the answer. Because it's uh, that we, we it is not uh, related to the diameter. We only consider the length. The length. Which means that uh, we if we consider the the total number of turns per unit length, which means that this one, this one is what we consider. This one we don't really consider. So we only consider 1.23 meter here. And then the final answer will be uh, 2.42 times 10 to minus 2 Tesla. Any questions? So now we consider a uh, current carrying coil as a magnetic dipole. Magnetic dipole. So in the previous chapter, I I suppose I've already mentioned about the magnetic dipole, which means as long as we have a loop, we have a loop, a current loop, then the 
uh, magnetic dipole is the current multiplied by the by the area, okay, by the cross section area of this loop. For as as long as this is a circle, it will be pi r square. And if it is a uh, uh, more than one loop, then you multiply the number of loop so that uh, the magnetic dipole is nothing but NIA. And now we consider yeah, the magnetic field produced by a current carrying coil, which is a magnetic dipole, at a point P located at distance Z. Suppose we consider a point here, Z, perpendicular to the central axis is parallel to the axis is given by. So it is somehow like this, somehow like this. So do you still remember this one? This one is the electric field generated by a, a electric dipole, electric dipole. So for the electric dipole, we have an expression like this, 4 pi epsilon 0, 2 p, p is the QD over C cube. And for the magnetic dipole, for the magnetic dipole, it generates a magnetic field somehow like this. So you can see here, mu is the magnetic uh, dipole moment, magnetic dipole moment magnetic dipole moment over z square. So here we have uh, electric dipole moment over z cube, over z cube. Here we have mu over z cube, and then mu zero over two pi. You can consider here, four pi epsilon zero is uh, analog to uh, mu zero over four pi. So we have mu zero over two pi and there we have uh two over four pi epsilon zero two over four pi epsilon zero so it is it has this very similar uh formula so mu is the dipole moment magnetic dipole moment of the coil this equation apply only when z is much greater so suppose uh, this is Z, Z, and Z is much, much larger than the, than the radius, much larger than the radius of the coil. So here we have VBQ again. So we have a, a current current coil as a magnetic dipole. We have two ways in which we can regard a current current coil as a magnetic dipole. So we have two magnetic bar. This is north pole, this is south pole. So we have a roughly ma a uniform magnetic field going from left to right, uh, as drawn in the green, light, uh, green lines. And then we have a current carrying wire uh, inside, and then we fix here, fix here. So in the, I think in the last chapter, we all already mentioned that it will rotate, it will rotate using the Lorentz force a related formula. So you know that the force acting on the left wire point to the upper side, and then the force acting on the right uh, wire will point to the bottom, so it will rotate, it will rotate. And the torque is nothing but this one, nothing but this one, which is mu cross B, mu cross B. So here, actually, we can derive it using the Biot-Zabat law or law of Biot-Zabat. So according to the law of Biot-Zabat, suppose we have ds uh, 
acting on these points, acting on these points, it will generate dB in this direction. And also for the opposite side, opposite side, we have another, uh, we have another dB pointing to uh, that direction. Pointing to, uh, well, let's see, pointing to this direction. So the horizontal component will cancel each other. The only remaining part is the uh, vertical component. Is the vertical component because you have a uh, ds cross out ds cross out here we have ds cross out so ds ds is out of the page r is this direction this direction so ds cross out onto that side and for this one ds into the page and then r onto that side so db onto that side So the horizontal component cancel each other and the and the vertical component can add together which is db parallel so so this is cosine alpha cosine alpha and this is small r and this is alpha so this is also alpha and cosine alpha is capital R over small r. Small r is c squared plus r, capital R squared, and take the square root. So cosine alpha is like this, r is like this. And then we substitute these two into here, into here. So we have like this. Then we can do the integration, which is quite trivial. Quite trivial. So this one is nothing but two pi two pi r two pi r. So two pi and this four pi cancel. So two remaining and then r and r become r square. So b will look like this and then we assume as sorry. So we assume r is much larger than capital uh, z is much larger than capital r. So that um, so that this term can be ignored. This term can be ignored. And then we add and we multiply pi on the bottom and on the top. So uh, i pi r square is the uh, pi r square is the a and i a is the mu. Ia is the mu is the magnetic dipole moment. So we derive the formula here, twenty nine point twenty four. Okay, so uh, well, so two circular arc have uh ready a so a a is this one b is that one uh sub tan angle theta equals theta is 74 degree and the carrier carrier current i equals to 0.411 a and share the same center of the curvature so what is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at point P, which is the center, center of the, the arc. So this one is very easy for for this one and this one. It will not generate any B field at point P because uh, because D S cross cross R is uh zero because they are point to the same direction they point to the same direction and uh, for this one for a uh, for this part and that part it will generate some b view at point p using the right hand rule right hand rule for the for for this part 
using the right hand rule, you point to the inside into the page. For these parts, using the right hand rule, you point out of the page. So B is mu zero i theta over two pi B minus mu zero i theta over two pi A. So mu zero i over theta over two pi one over V minus one over A. So it is a uh, 2 times 10 to minus 7 times a is 0 0.411 and then times theta 74.1 degree 70, uh, 74 degree and then we actually need to convert it into radi radian so we divide it by 180 degree and then multiply it by pi to make it a radian. So uh, B is 10.7 centimeter, which is 0 0.107 minus 1 over 0 0.135. So B is 1.02 times 10 to minus 7 Tesla. And then actually, uh, because, because the one due to this part is larger. So this B should be out of the page. Out of the page. Out of the page. Because this distance is, is smaller. So this one generally the B view should be larger. They are they point to the opposite direction, but this one is larger, so it follows the direction of this part. Okay, so uh, we have the final one. So a long circular pipe with outside radius R. Long, uh, oh, so this one is R from the center to this part, carrying a uniform distribution I into the page. So the I, uh, a wire runs parallel to the pipe at a distance 3R. So from here to here is 3R. From center to center, find the magnitude and direction into or out of the page of the current in the wire such that the net magnetic field at point P has the same magnitude as the net magnetic field at the center of the pipe, but this is in opposite direction. So we need to de determine the current, the current here. So first of all, we can uh, we can find that. Uh, yeah, uh, so suppose the current, uh, the current for this part is IW, the current for this part is IW, so BC would be mu zero IW over 2 pi times 3 R. Because we need to calculate that, uh, Uh, such that the magnetic field at P at P has the same magnitude at the net magnetic field at the center of the pipe, at the center of the pipe. So BC BC is here, BC is here. For this current, it will not generate a B field at the center, at the center, right? <laughs> because you can try to draw something like the ambient loop inside and then you'll find that there are no uh, enclosed B view enclosed B view for for this structure so this current will not generate B view at at the center so
So only this wire will generate B field at this point. So BC is like this. BC is like this. Actually, uh, maybe point to that side or that side, depending on on the direction of the Y. Okay, so it is nothing but mu zero I W over six pi R. And actually, it should point to the left side. It should point to the left side. I will let you know why. Actually, uh, we also want to calculate the B view at point P. So BP is nothing but uh, mu zero i w over two pi r, two pi r, because the distance between the wire and point P is r, and then minus uh, mu zero i uh, two pi over two r, two r. So. Uh, so this structure will generate the B field with a negative direction because we want to make it uh, make it smaller. Actually, this is originally large, larger than this one, and we want to cancel part of it. Cancel part of it. So we also want to make this wire going into the page into the page. So BC will generate a B view onto the left side, onto the left side. And according to this structure, according to this structure, it will generate a B view to the right side, to the right side. And for the wire, if it is into the page, it will generate a B view onto the left side. So some of it can be canceled. Some of it can be canceled. So this is due to the wire. B e, uh, due to the wire at point P. And this is BP due to due to this stuff. So part of it got canceled. And then we hope that uh, BC to be negative BP easy to be negative BP. And then we can find that uh, mu zero I W over six pi R equals um, mu zero I four pi R uh, minus mu zero I W over Two pi r, and then according to some uh, algebraic calculation, you can find that i w is three over eight i, and then it is nothing but three over eight times eight, which is three milliamp. Just now we also mentioned that IW should be into the page. Into the page. Because we actually need to make it with the opposite direction so that we need to cancel it. And in this case, the Y, the, the current of the Y should, be, should go into the page and, and make the uh, B view at this point, point to the uh, point to the left side. 